Alright, hello everyone and good afternoon. Welcome to another episode of Fresh Money where we have interesting conversations with interesting people in the world of Web3. And joining me today is another fresh face, Paul, one of Indeed. the members of the Metaverse team. So Paul, can you introduce yourselves and give us a brief description of what you do in PDAX? Sure. Uh, I'm Paolo Narciso. I joined PDAX very recently um, in December of 2022. I am in the Metaverse team as the NFT creation head. So what my job mostly entails is talking to different people about different NFT projects and convincing them to come work with us uh, and launch projects with us. So we help them um, put together projects. That's what I do. Very exciting. Very exciting. Just like this episode, we'll be discussing about the ecosystem of Tezos. But before we bring our guests in, I just want to remind you guys that we have this sharing game. Let me just share my screen. So we have this sharing contest right now, and there is a special giveaway. Oops. Well, it's not loading. Anyway, can you, can you see my screen, Paul? Yeah, I can see it now. Yeah. All right. All right, so we have a special giveaway today. Credits to the Tezos team. So our sharing contest will award two winners of a Bjorn t-shirt. So the mechanics what? of our sharing contest is, yeah, very exciting. You can see the picture at the right-hand side. And before, and the mechanics for this one is to simply share the stream, tag two of your friends and the Tezos Philippines Facebook page in the comment section, and just react to the stream. And you already have a chance to win of a Bjorn t-shirt. So winners will take a screenshot of this stream as their name is flashed and will be announced at the end of the show. Then you just have to send the screenshot to our Facebook page and, along with your name, address, and shirt size. So that's a, a Tezos t-shirt done by uh, artist Bjorn Calieja, right? Yes, very exciting. Yeah. Prominent artist. I'm a, I'm a big fan Ooh. of his work. He does some great Likewise. stuff. Likewise. Would want to have one sh the shirt as well. <laughs> yeah, I want to. <laughs> so other things that you want to promote is the PDAX Learn social media pages. So guys, follow our Facebook and Twitter pages if you guys want to learn more about the world of cryptocurrencies. Care of the PDAX Learn team. All right. So I guess we can introduce our guests for today. So our episode for today will be discussing about the newly listed token in PDAX, which is Tezos, or with the ticker name XTZ. And joining us in our episode today, Pao, is Bjorn Kalieja, a prominent um, artist who have delved into the world of NFTs and chose Tezos as his blockchain. And joining him is Ivan Larin, the, a growth member of Tezos APAC. So guys, let's welcome in. Hey, Bjorn. Hey, Ivan. Thank you. Hey. Hi. Hey guys, thanks for joining us today. Guys, Excited to have you guys for having, on uh, the show. Thanks for having me then. Yeah, so I, before we talk about the Tez ecosystem, we want to know more about your stories. So what were your backgrounds before joining Web3? Ivan, you can start on this one. Sure. Um, before joining Web3, I was in a legal firm. Um, doing I write pitches for for a legal firm and also doing my finishing my master's in media comms. Uh, yeah, so yeah, Web3 is a totally new world for me. How did you find yourself um, working in Web3, Ivan? Uh, lots of things to learn. Uh, the learning curve is, is very steep and um, the people are just, but the people are very supportive for you to, to, um, to know more and to learn more. And uh, a lot of changes, a lot of new things. It is, yeah, it's, it's a very exciting and fun place to be in. It's exciting to be uh, in a pioneering industry, isn't it, right? Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Okay, how about you, Bjorn? What was your background before crypto or Web3? Um, prior to uh, jumping into uh, crypto, uh, um, I'm, a, I'm a visual artist. Uh, I've been exhibiting my paintings in galleries uh, for for quite some time uh, before joining the the NFT scene, uh, so um, I used to be also a graphic designer. Uh, I've worked in uh, design studios and corporate companies uh, for for I think ten years or more. Uh, 
um, oh, 10 years as, uh, alongside my my uh, fine art practice are you full-time artist these days bjorn yeah yeah um sana, sana <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how long how long have you been a full-time artist ang tricky ng question kasi parang uh, I considered myself a full-time artist uh, for for almost uh, 20 years na uh, even oh. if I had a day job parang parang mas mas priority ko yung yung practice ko yung art practice uh, but yung parang sideline lang yung day job talaga <laughs> but, <laughs> I get but, it I get uh, it full-time siguro since uh 2017 na nawala ng ibang ano commitments. Oh, okay. Cool, cool, cool. So 20 years as a full-time artist and 20 from 2017 onwards na yun lang yung racket. <laughs> <laughs> then Bjorn, cool. can you tell us more about your art style and where you get your inspiration from? Um but I sa style uh Like shift din yung 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 art style ko so so parang I get inspired by a lot of things parang uh, siguro I I look at uh from from art history hanggang sa sa what we have here in Manila yung visual visual texture natin sa Manila uh and uh cartoons uh comic books parang uh it's it's been a journey eh. parang uh parang every time learning experience so nagbabago na nagbabago yung trabaho uh ayun parang ano parang walang specific na art style ngayon parang karamihan ng visual language ko is coming from uh looking at uh german painters at saka cartoons and and the internet parang yung colors yung texture yung Sa Manila talaga. Manila yung ano. Kasi uh, I was born and I grew up in Manila. So, malaki yung, malaki yung visual influence sa akin ng, ng environment ko. Your primary medium is uh, paint talaga, di ba? Like, yes. Uh, I use uh, oil, oil paint. Uh, pero nagtatry ako, hinahalo ko siya sa acrylic and uh, spray paint. So, um, I think mixed media, sir. Mixed but media, mostly but oil. Mostly oil. And behind you is one of your works. Is that correct? <laughs> yeah, it's one of the, yeah. the paintings I know. One of the paintings you decided to keep for yourself. <laughs> Hopefully, but but uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, well, as a traditional painter you eventually released um, work uh, as NFTs on the Tezos platform. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, I started uh, minting NFTs uh, around um, late March or early April 2021. 20, uh, so my friend kasi, uh, who's uh, into crypto, but I'm parang sinabi niya sa akin na oy there's this new marketplace a uh, new platform for NFTs na parang powered by Tezos uh, and he's a big uh, advocate of Tezos then eh, kasi he's one of the early adapters ng ng Tezos oh. mm, so okay. sabi niya you have may may animation sa ko and then baka pwede mong i-mint so Naisip ko parang nothing to lose naman. Uh, I was just uh, making these animations for myself because uh, I wanted to explore what I can do with, uh, with the characters that I use dun sa paintings ko. And then... Uh, uh, super cool. Nakaipon ako ng collection ng animations. And then, ayun, I started minting. And then uh, I met a lot of... Uh, good people uh, in the community, in the Tezos community, na parang um, na, na, mas na-engage na ako uh, with uh, minting my work in, in Tezos. 
So prior to uh, creating your own work on Tezos, uh, you were, did you do any collection of NFTs first? Or was your no. first experience in the blockchain as a creator? It was the first experience. Parang, um, actually, sobrang uh, wala akong alam sa technology. <laughs> but I used to work in an, uh, for, for an IT distributor. Parang, but but she, I wasn't... Uh, aware of uh nfts uh may may idea ko kasi parang i i jumped into crypto early uh around 2016 2017 uh mm. but uh that was the time na lumabas ata yung crypto punks and oh, na wow. ko na yung, yung crypto punks but uh i wasn't very parang involved uh dun sa sa nangyayari uh pero I never tried uh, minting NFTs uh, until Hicket Nook. Until Hicket Nook, right? Uh, Hicket Nook is a, an artist platform on Tezos, di ba? Yes, oh, yes. Tezos. It was started by uh, Rafa. Uh, but eventually, parang, ano, parang, eh, nagkaroon din ng mga drama dun sa, dun sa community. So, parang, nawala yung Hicket Nook. Uh, napalitan siya ng bagong pangalan bagong bagong platform na ginawa ng community itself uh, which is now teya teya dot art um, so parang teya, teya was art. built by the community um, and then nagkaroon din ng maraming ibang platform like like what you're seeing now uh, object dot com um, may fx hash uh, may versum so nanganak na nang nanganak si tezos <laughs> and those are all um, those are all nft marketplaces on tezos Yes, yes. Uh, okay, cool. And these animations that you had, um, you had them prepared before you even thought about creating NFTs? Uh, a lot of them, yes. Uh, pero, um, kasi parang I consider making the animations as a part of my, ano, my, my visual art practice. So, uh, every time na parang uh, I feel the urge of uh, creating an animation, ginagawa ko siya. Uh, but if I wanted to see uh, uh, this, the character move, parang for me, kasi parang, ano, seeing it uh, with movement, parang it, it brings life to the character. Eh? Parang it's another dimension of the work, uh, another layer. Na mm-hmm. parang <clears throat> it gives uh, the audience another perspective uh, on how to look at the artwork. So, so I know like these um so these little characters of yours uh. I know you insert them in your paintings, right? They're scattered yeah. all over uh, as little characters. Um, do you have a particular name for it? It started na wala siyang name. Um, so parang it was just a, a representation of a, of a human being. Parang with all the nakedness and uh, parang I, I was trying to reveal uh, what it uh, looks like to be a human, a human being, na parang stripped of everything. So, oh. nung nung parang nagkaroon ng time na oh, I needed to, I needed a name for these characters. Parang na ko the 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 male is Adam, tapos yung female is Eve. So, kasi na isip ko na parang oh, I'm I'm building a, a my own universe with my art. So, siguro dahil sila yung characters sa uh, Tama lang na sila si Adam and Eve. Astig. Astig, astig. That's cool, man. Uh, I really like the idea that uh, a lot of these animations are, uh, exist in your physical paintings. Like the characters are in your physical paintings and you translated them into its own art piece. Yeah, it's very fascinating. Bjorn, do you have any favorite artworks that you want to highlight? Favorite? <laughs> yeah, pinaka favorite. Wala. Mahirap mamili eh. But, but, ano, parang, I, I think about the artworks as, ano eh, parang, a visual diary, uh, na, every moment, uh, the, uh, every artwork tells a story about the moment in my life na I was creating it. So, parang, uh, there are, sometimes there, there are narratives, pero sometimes I just wanted to play, so, Iba iba rin siya. Um, but favorites, parang, parang, it's hard. It's hard to pick one. 
Um, <laughs> you're right. Yeah. So what do you it's think? Like, and, oh, go ahead, Paul. It's no, it's like asking, uh, "What's your favorite child?" <laughs> that's <laughs> yeah, that's like asking that. there. yeah. That's true. So how's the art community like in the Telsos ecosystem, Bjorn? When when I started, parang it was super exciting. Eh? Parang everybody was excited. Tapos, uh, um, I've met a lot of people from everywhere. Parang it's a global community, so I was able to interact. Tapos, uh, we have this uh, different chat uh, chat groups. Na parang oh, I can talk to these uh, people. Parang um, some artists na I used to look uh, I, I looked up to when I was starting out parang I met in I met in the community that was uh, I was able to meet a lot of good people talaga that was uh, a few collectors uh, a lot of artists uh, so very active sila in promoting the arts uh, very excited sila to to enter the the art world uh, through through Tezos NFTs uh and um siguro medyo na apektuhan siya ng market ng bear market medyo nag die down pero tuloy-tuloy pa rin yung yung community and pushing the the blockchain forward fascinating i i'm curious have you gotten um have you found new collectors of your fiscal works from the NF, from the uh, like from the Tezos uh, art community? Have you found people who started collecting fiscal stuff? Would you know? <laughs> I did have, uh, but I, there was this one artist who uh, who found out about the paintings. That was, but I referred him to my gallery here in Manila. So. He bought a painting. Uh, oh wow! That was somewhere asking if they can commission. Pero, uh, siguro yung yung shipping sa Philippines medyo complicated kaya mahirap din. <laughs> so, I tried, shipping pero yung shipping kasi marami pang papers na kailangan kasi kasi To ship out. To ship out a uh, painting. So may mga permits pa na nila require may mga a lot of things but there are but you are seeing interest in like um yes, people there's... going from digital to physical works no yeah well so i met i met uh, a few artists doing the art stage um si marcelo si iskra siya si kevin abosh parang uh, marcelo has been a good friend since i started but he's the first um to feature my work sa parang blog niya and when when we were talking dun sa art stage parang ah, sa, sa art sg uh he was asking na parang oh is there a way that i can i can buy one of your physical works uh and then parang ayo i think there's interest uh but uh kasi one man team ako so so may oh, oh. difficulty ako to to do the the admin stuff. I see, I see, I see. Well, at least with NFTs, there's no shipping involved. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's very easy for a one man team to uh, <laughs> to create and sell work on uh, um, these on these various marketplaces. Right, Bjorn. I'm curious if you have plans on expanding to other networks with your NFTs or are you just sticking with Tezos? Because some networks may be more popular, like BNB Chain, maybe Polygon and Solana. So I'm just curious if you have any plans on expanding to other chains. Um, I, I, I do have a few artworks on, on a farm function. Uh, it's a... It's a marketplace na sa Solana. Uh, I did one collab work na we dropped in Ethereum uh, sa foundation. But um, most of the works talaga parang is in Tezos. Uh, I wanted to to have a collection of the animations there. Um, but 
I, I never really plan anything so parang spontaneous lang and then hindi hindi natin alam baka one of these days maiisipan ko siya I suppose you already have an audience on the Tezos marketplace as yeah. well. Yeah. Like through the ecosystem. But a lot so of people are asking then if uh, I'm going to do uh, Ethereum drops. But before sa, sa yung energy efficiency of Ethereum, parang, parang mahirap sa akin na, na mag jump sa Ethereum. But nowadays, uh, since ano na sila, uh, Proof of stake na lang sila. I don't know. Uh, siguro kung may magbubuyo lang sa <laughs> all the time. Uh, I guess it's worth um, asking now, especially since we have a T- Tezos APAC representative yes. here with yeah. us, uh, that for those that aren't familiar with the Tezos chain, what is the advantage of Tezos compared to other um, blockchain platforms? Sure. Um, I think um, Tezos is an advantage over other blockchains um, because um, of its self-amending feature. Um, it upgrades to the protocol uh, without a hard fork, so making Tezos a more uh, extremely agile. So this is what happens with uh, what happened with Ethereum, Ethereum Classic, um, where mm-hmm. there was split that happened. So this thing doesn't happen in, uh, on, on, on on Tezos. Uh, also, there um, there's a cheaper gas fees, which I think is very attractive for most of our NFT artists out there. Uh, makes the transaction uh, faster and uh, less expensive for for those who are who want to do some transaction on Tezos blockchain. Another thing that um, I think was also mentioned by Bjorn is that um, it's environmentally friendly. So since it's using a proof of stake uh, instead of proof of work, then um, it uses less energy compared to other blockchains. So these are the things that are, I think, advantageous uh, when you are on the Tezos blockchain. So Tezos really started as a proof of stake, right? It was from the beginning, it was like that. Yes. I want, maybe you could tell us a little bit more about what you were saying about it being a more agile ecosystem, like it upgrades faster compared to other chains. Is that what you mean? Oh, because it's self-amending. So what do you um, mean uh, the upgrades to the protocol uh, can happen without a fork. Yeah. Yes. So, so it doesn't mean a separate chain for it to be upgraded. Because that's what happened to Ethereum. When it upgraded to the proof of stake uh, consensus mechanism, it basically created a new chain for yes. Ethereum. Right. So what uh, were the recent upgrades that were done for Tezos? So there is a, um, we do upgrade every like three months. There are consensus consensus happening uh, within the ecosystem. Um, the, the recent upgrade is called, um, I think it's Lima upgrade if I'm not wrong. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, it's called, yeah. Um, what was the, I wonder if you know that, what was the main goal of Tezos as a separate blockchain? I know it came after um, it came it came after F. Um, I don't know if it was a response to, but maybe you can talk a little bit about what the uh, what Tezos was aiming to do with its own blockchain. Um, the purpose of Tezos is to survive all of the blockchains. So, uh, oh wow! Oh. Oh. The one is that, that the yeah, <laughs> its goal Andre. is to survive all the blockchains. That's amazing. Yeah, yes. <laughs> um, that's why the um, the self amendment is something good, uh, I believe, because it it usually upgrades based on what the community thinks where the blockchain should go, the blockchain technology should go. So in the end, the people decide what happens to it. So I think that's one of the good things um, on on Tezos. When you say what the community decides, is that uh, done by the validators or token holders? Oh, by the validators and token holders, yeah. Uh, by everybody? Uh, who are at stake, yes. Yes. Oh, it's fascinating. And how often do these votes take place? Um, it happens. The, the updates happens within three to, uh, three to four months. Yeah. Okay. So... Uh, ro- 
so every three or four months there's a new pro- there are new proposals that are brought up by the community yes and, and then, voted um, upon? yes and those who have stake can decide on um what happens so there's a voting mechanism to it mm. so if i buy tezos tokens now i get votes on what the updates are going to be um if you stick them to a certain um if you stick them if i stake them ah yes. okay. what's the yield right now for staking tezos was that the yield Oh, uh, it really depends. Uh, th- you can check some of our bakers over there, but uh, I think there's like five percent too. Yeah, it, it yeah, varies yeah. depending oh, on the yeah. Yeah, interestingly, you call your staking mechanism bakers, right? Or baking? Is that correct in Tesos? Yes. Why do you call it that way instead of the regular term? Is there like a different advantage wow. compared to other proof of stake platforms? <laughs> Why they call it bake? Uh, oh. Actually, interesting question. I'm not very sure. I can get better to you on that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool, and cool. it also calls a call like set of tesos called rolls. So it's like baking rolls. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But I should, I should, yeah, I should look into that more. Yeah. <laughs> That's interesting. I wonder what uh, if if tesos means something. Does it mean anything in itself? The word. Would you happen to know? (laughs) No. Okay. Then Um, aside from staking, what else can you do with the XTZ token? You can purchase NFTs with it. Mm -hmm. Uh, You can also. Um, we also have like uh um DeFi. There's also DeFi happening on Tezos where you know you can you can exchange, and um, there are. Applications, so there are lots of developers building on Tesla's at the moment, uh, where you can use your your XTZ. Yeah, so there are, there are multi, a lot of uses for for your XTZ. So Bjorn mentioned that there's a lot of um, art marketplaces that have gone live on Tesla's now, but I was wondering maybe you could share with our uh, viewers what the other big platforms on XTZ are besides the uh, art marketplaces. Um, at the moment, the biggest our biggest community is in in the art, um, mm. but um, there are also other use cases for for Tezos. So uh, like um, CBDCs, um, I'm not sure if you there's this a uh, bank in France where they they try to introduce um, a stable coin uh, called Lug. Well, okay. So um, that's a mouthful. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. This, this is the name of the call. It's L U G H. It's yeah. a euro stable coin, and uh, it's it's on the Tezos blockchain. And uh, based on the euro. Yes. Okay. Based on the euro. Uh the back. I think it's called Society General. Uh, one of the leading European um financial services groups. Um. Also, there is a BNP Paribas. Um, where they announced that um they'll be working with the Tezos blockchain, where they launch a project to explore the potential use. And it's uh, implications of uh, digital currencies. Um, so yeah, we have NFTs, we have CBDCs, uh, we also have DeFi's, and also there's also corporate baking happening in, on Tezos. Um, yeah. Sorry, uh, CBDCs. Um, what are CBDCs? Uh, CBD, sorry, uh, it's a central bank digital currency. So oh, okay. it's a okay. form of currency. It's used to it is issued and regulated by a uh, central bank. It's um it's a numerical representation of a fiat currency. Mm, I understand now. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But the biggest communities on Tezos are really the art, the NFT and art communities. I guess yes. they're the loudest here. <laughs> yes, and uh, that's something that we're actually also pushing. That Tezos is for art, so we are kind of. Want to attach ourselves it when you think of art when you also think of tezos that's why we have partnered with lots of um exhibitions uh last year we did with uh for tza pack uh we um we partnered with art basel hong kong we also did our exhibition in jakarta called the art moments jakarta and then uh recently we did the c focus here in singapore and yeah we do yeah so what we actually want is to 
to attach ourselves to art. Recently, we also have the Champ Medici um, program, which we want to work with artists, with um, musicians to also bring their work into NFT. So yeah, a lot of work is being done to to attach ourselves to, to art. So Tezos uh, directly tries to support the arts as a, as a chain. You mentioned art, you sponsored, uh, you participated with Art Basel? And yes. And yes. C-Focus. 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 And also we did uh, the one at Art Moments Jakarta. We also have like some grants to support some of the artists. And we do have our NFT um, community, um, mm-hmm. which is very closely knitted. Like they know each other. They're all from all over the place. But then if we have, there are any questions, then they help each other so yeah it's a very closely to kind of uh, nft co- uh, artist community on tezos yeah i've seen that uh the nft community has really created like a global art consciousness in the in this in the zo- in the domain of it um but to the people who are watching maybe uh if somebody is interested to uh get support from tezos you said you do art grants how do how does somebody go and apply for something like that uh, we have actually various grants. So um, there, uh, it's not only for art grants. Um, it can be technical grant or community grant. So for mm-hmm. technical grants, it's like if you want to build applications or you want to integrate your current applications in Tezos. For a community grant, is if you want to do something for the community. And that's where we somehow link the, um, the art. So we try to educate people uh, when it comes to uh, art. So it, it comes like educating current art. Um, traditional artists teach them about what are nfts how you know how to create wallets and uh, what can you do and support them and then also if they need some funding for some exhibitions then um if we think we can support them we we will support them so there are we do have some resources to make sure that um the artist community um prosper in on on the tesla's blockchain okay Um, uh so a quick shout out to some people in chat we have uh sevi loves art I know he's a prominent crypto artist. GM Idol Bjorn. Hi Sevi. Hi Sevi. Hi Sevi. Hi April. Um, I I know they were at the Tezos event at Art Fair last year. Um, and uh, we have someone. Uh, we have a question from Ismael Jerusalem asking, "Will Tezos support stablecoin for the Philippines? Something like?" Pezos? <laughs> witty. That's witty. <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, I know it's well. Yeah, you can create one and then we can talk about it. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> What's up, Ismail? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's clever. I, I find it really fascinating how there's such a strong art community in the Tezos ecosystem. And it's not just like um, PFP collections or NFT collections. Actually, traditional art in a digital form. I'm just curious, Ivan, what do you think attracted this particular group of people to Tezos compared to other uh, networks? Sure. I mean, I always answer that, oh, the technical answer is uh, it has cheaper gas fees. You know, it. Mm-hmm. Um, especially if you're like an artist in the Philippines, um, it's, it's just very minimal. Um, like if someone pass you one test, you can actually create multiple transactions with a single test. You can um, put your artwork, several of your artwork, into the onto the blockchain with with one XTZ. If I'm not wrong, a single uh, transaction will cost you 0.01 or 0.1. It's just very minimal, so it's very cheap. So that's why it's very attractive for for the NFT artist community. Uh, the second thing is, I think it's. Um, it's kind of a serendipity where people are just the artists just happen to be on Tezos. Because the cheaper gas is if, if I mean if you talk, if you think about it, it's not unique to it's not unique to Tezos. You can also there are also other blockchains which are cheaper. But it just so happened that the, the artist community is very strong and is very supportive in on Tezos. And in that case, I think it attracts more talent, it attracts attracts more artists. To be in there, so it, uh, somehow I mean I don't. It sounds easy, but like maybe they somehow feel home at home, or like um, they find a place on Tesla. That's why they 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 are on Tesla. Yeah. So that's what I think. 
I think um, the network effects of a new of a community yeah. of a yeah. organic community really can't be understated yes. the, from there. Yeah. Bjorn, I'm. Uh, how was your experience like coming into the Tezos community? Mm-hmm. I know. Um, you so, I know that uh, you said you started minting in 2021, but what was the reaction like when you first got in? Was it like immediate success or did it take a while before you, your first purchase was made? How'd that go? So we started, you know, uh, I started with a friend uh, because I, I, I didn't really know or understand anything about the NFTs and, and the blockchain. So my friend uh, um, parang assisted me na parang, oh, they, he, he parang set up a wallet and uh, opened an account and he kept no na parang Tezos Philippines yung pangalan so it, it was the first Tezos Philippines and then wow. uh, your friend's a pioneer <laughs> <laughs> and then parang the plan was to to mint artworks by ano by Filipino artists don sa sa account na yon but and so ano I I submitted a few of my my artworks my animations and then we had an inquiry from a fellow artist, si uh, Press Tube or si James Patterson. Na parang, uh, I would like to purchase your artwork, but uh, I wouldn't purchase it if it wasn't on your personal account. So um, <laughs> oh, I was forced to to uh, to open my new Kukai wallet and uh, parang to mint the artwork on on my personal account, and then. And he he bought the the animation and uh, from then parang nagtuloy tuloy na parang people were supporting uh, very supportive uh, that was the tale of the first uh, object for object so uh, I made an artwork na I minted for free uh, and then ayon parang organically na na build ko yung community around my art. Uh, around what I do. Tapos, uh, I ended up having uh, having my own project na rin na, na parang it, yung stupid avatar na parang I accidentally built a, the, uh, built a cult around around this uh, PFP uh, satire I remember project. the stupids, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Stupid so, avatars. Parang open naman. Parang maganda yung reception for 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 me as an artist when I entered into the Tezos community. So I mean, the technical aspect is certainly one of the things that people have to sort of get over when they um, want to release something, right? But I w- was hoping you could tell us how you were able to get your message out there about. That you have work that's available for sale and telling your story to people who don't necessarily know you. How did you how did you cross that barrier online? Ah, yun, parang, parang people who saw what I do, parang they started retweeting my 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 artwork and then parang uh, they got in touch with me, parang people were messaging me about about my art. Tapos sabi nila, some, some of them, parang before they bought the artwork, parang they did their research na parang oh, you're, you're, you're in the traditional art scene or you're doing these gallery shows. So parang, uh, I think, uh, organically na, na, na parang sila na yung uh, nag-promote or, or they, they just put it out there. Tapos, uh, nagkaroon din ng parang mga Twitter spaces na parang I was invited to talk uh, and then ayun um, slow slow progress na, na parang uh unti na established ko yung sarili ko within within the community so Twitter talaga as the space in which you had to claim for to promote your work on as an, on the NFT side yes i think so uh kasi most of the most of the following ko sa Instagram is uh, parang sa traditional na, na art practice ko. Uh, and then sa Twitter, parang walang laman yung Twitter ko, puro rant lang. Nilinis ko siya when I started and then 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the following grew organically rin. So, Twitter, parang nung early days, parang pag sa Twitter may hashtag NFT ka, parang uh, automatic na nag-follow yung mga tao sa NFT kasi sobrang bago pa niya nun. And there was mm-hmm. only a few people na interested sa 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 NFTs. And then, ayun, parang pag, pag nag-NFT ka, parang open sila na na involved as a community nila. I, I guess on the other side of that, Bjorn, I'm curious, did you get any pushback from the tra- traditional art community when you decided to do digital works? I had this uh, conversation with a curator. He said, when you do your, do your thing, parang yung NFTs, I don't know so, wala akong pakialam diyan. Okay. Uh, parang parang they 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 let me do my my NFT stuff pa na na parang ni. Um push back with parang wala naman. Uh, I think uh, what we're doing here with uh especially with uh PZ APAC uh we're trying mm-hmm. to push uh for 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 the technology uh to be to have use use case and uh real use case scenarios sa sa gallery system natin parang and ang laki ng possibilities uh for for the technology uh, to be used sa galleries uh especially for uh new media artists uh video artists uh, digital artists so ang daming opportunities na pwedeng magamit sa uh pwede rin sa as uh, parang proof of certification na uh, na may trace ng provenance. So, uh, I, I think uh, once uh, we educate the the art community uh, here in the Philippines, parang uh, ma, ma, mag-start tayo mag-adapt uh, sa technology kasi it's available and it's avail- available to use tapos parang ang daming, uh, ang daming pwedeng gawin sa kanya. So, I think it's gonna change the game. Interesting, interesting. I mean, Shampa, even in the early days, there's a lot of, you know, I've seen there's been a lot of um, FUD about what NFTs are, especially for artists. So I was wondering if uh, you personally got any of that heat as one of the pioneers in the space here. As far as FUD, but I tried to cancel out the noise. <laughs> so I don't, I don't, That's good. I don't really care about the. Hindi naman sa I don't care about the market pero parang uh, I don't really care about the noise na na I don't need. So I'm I'm trying to have fun doing doing what I do dito sa space parang uh, I'm trying to enjoy it as much as I can. Uh, parang I find it as a platform for for releasing work uh, for showing my work to people. Uh, it helped grow my audience then uh in a in a much more global scale uh so parang um it's like lagi ko sinasabi parang the the grander the intention the stronger the foundation parang uh my intention uh, here is not to make money so uh i wanted to be part of something bigger than 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 just myself parang um I'm representing Filipino artists, siguro in a way, uh, and trying to mo- to promote what we're capable of doing as uh, being Filipinos and being artists. So, eh, parang hindi hindi lang sa about make making a living out of uh, selling art as NFTs. So, hindi, hindi sa about making money, pero. Uh, eh, I, I think of it as something bigger. Siguro kaya parang hindi ako naapektuhan ng food. Mm. Or, or if wala akong market, parang hindi rin ako masyadong kinakabahan or <laughs> tatatakot. Uh, <laughs> kasi parang I'm minting my animations para it can survive um, longer than I can in the blockchain. So the greater the intention, the stronger the foundation. Did you I come like up that. with that? Yeah, I think it's something to live by as an artist for me. But I, think, oh. but I, think, I have 
grander intentions for what I'm doing. Uh, it's not just uh, I'm sharing my art, but because I'm trying to communicate, right? I'm trying to communicate something uh, through my art. Uh, I can't define mo specifically kung ano yon, pero uh, hopefully uh, I I can I can connect to people with uh, what I'm doing. Uh, People find it interesting. People find it fun, uh, or people realize something about what I'm doing about my art. Uh, so yun parang uh, sabi nga nila we can't change the world with art, but uh, we can change it uh, one per- perspective at a time. So hopefully, parang may isang tao na uh, may realize when we look at one of my artworks or one of my NFTs, and then. Uh, they it, it makes it made them it makes them realize something about the world but I mean, how how to see the world oh interesting and that the digital platforms really give you a much much wider reach than you would on your own no yeah, yeah. but bjorn i'm curious given your experience of working with the different marketplaces and Tesos, are there any other tools or services that needs improvement to onboard more artists or to better support them aside from the gallery you mentioned earlier um i think what you did guys with pdax uh um na, na you brought tezos in uh, i think it's a big leap for for <clears throat> tezos and tezos tezos art uh i think yun yung isa sa mga missing na uh, na parang need ng ng community uh, especially for people who wanted to collect na wala na yung na wala na yung parang struggle na oh I wanted to get one of your NFTs tapos uh oh, kailangan akong gumawa ng account sa Binance tapos kailangan akong mag bumili ng Ethereum and then ko-convert ko tapos so parang napadali yung yung flow uh, so easier now if someone approaches me na parang, how can I get one of your NFTs? So I, I just point them to Pidax na it's gonna be way more easier. Nice. Thank you. We're very happy to be providing um, these kinds of services <laughs> yes. uh, focused on the Filipinos and the Philippines to get on board and to uh, participate in the wider crypto environment both as a service provider and as an educational platform like what we're doing now (laughs) so ivan um aside from the nft side the artist side of tezos what other things can non-artists do within the tezos ecosystem or what other applications that you want to highlight like let's say in DeFi or other parts or maybe even game five there's any projects building in Tezos? Um, for, for for this year, we definitely want to tap into games. Um, so uh, for those who are who are watching this, um, stay tuned. Uh, there will be some announcement that we want to make, and we want uh, the the Filipino community to to get involved. Of course, um, at the moment uh, we just uh, for for DeFi we just launch our 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 plenty. Um, uh, plenty DeFi where you can um, swap swap tokens within within Tezos. Um, for other applications, we do have a lot lots of lots of applications out there um, with with various use. But um, I think it's also the the current market that we are in. Um, although you know people might there's a there's a gloomy year happening, but uh, I think people are kind of still still building so there we see a lot of people still building on tezos and um um just building applications that will have um uses for 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 our users out there so yeah lots of things to to look out for and hopefully we have more stuff from coming from the philippines um if we do have lots of artists that perhaps we can have our um i don't know just a market filipino marketplace for nfts yeah that's just something to you know to tinker about that, yeah, because um, we have a very strong Filipino artist community out there. So yeah. 
Interesting, interesting. So, are there any projects that are currently building in Plants that you, that's your favorite or you want to highlight, Ivan? Or something you're really excited about? <clears throat> There's some that I can't say yet uh, because, um, uh, do, okay. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not even like what they do, like some vague description. <laughs> Uh, okay, so for the games, I, I already can't say much. Um, but there's a lot of NFT tools that which um, uh, that are out there. Um, there is recently there's this um NFT, um, project from Malaysia called Pentazar.io. So it's it's another NFT um platform, and there are also tools like um, Sweaty NFT, which makes it easier for people to actually get on board, uh, on on NFTs. Because usually if um some like if you want to create a certain uh if you want to release a certain artwork or yeah if you if you want to release a certain um project on nfts some people might find it hard to to do some of the technicalities um that's what the nft make it very simple for you to just drag and drop everything and it it, it uploads everything to the system so yeah that, those are some of the projects that i find very interesting uh there is also one of this just very very minor project that i i saw um it 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 makes the tweet an nft so you just tag there's this you just tag them and then it automatically becomes a an nft so yeah a lot of um re- this very small project which i find very very interesting but of course um blo- there's more into blockchain uh than nfts um there's also this one project from Indonesia where they put their archives, the newspaper archives, uh, as as NFTs. So I think that's a very powerful use case where, you know, you can actually put history onto blockchain. And then if it's there, it's there forever and you can't change it. So yeah, that's, th- those are some of the applications of blockchain uh, that we can do in on our daily lives that um, is very 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 helpful to us because usually when people think about NFTs you know it's just like profile pictures but there are actually lots of uses to it so yeah I'm just very excited on how people use it uh, I always see it like blockchain is a form of tool so you use it however you want it and now I'm just very excited on how people will think about it and um, how will they utilize it yeah and the cheap gas fees on Tezos really uh, gives room for people to experiment with different kinds of concepts. I think that's super cool that uh, people are creating automations because you know you can't do something like that on ETH. <laughs> the like with the turning tweets into NFTs, it's going to be crazy expensive if you tried on yeah. uh, on the F. So we have some questions in the community. So from Kit. Vida, what is the primary NFT marketplace for Tezos? Oh, there are various um, NFT marketplaces uh, on Tezos. Um, um, lots of um, artists are currently on uh, OBJKT, which is object.com, also FS, uh, FX hash, but we also have other marketplaces called, uh, such as Rarible, Thea, um, AKSwap, which is an Asian, which is a NFT marketplace created by, by um, group of developers from Taiwan. So, oh uh, yeah, there's yeah a couple of there's a lot of um, marketplace in on, on Tezos. Hope Great. that answers your question. Yep. And another question for Tim Franks: Is there any difference with Tezos NFTs compared to Solana and ETH NFTs? Uh, I can chip into this, but per, uh, also maybe Bjorn can can follow up after. But for me, I, I think um, the the um, the kind of NFTs we see uh, on Tezos are more into the art side, and um, the ones that we see on other blockchains are more into collections or uh, PFPs. So yeah, the main difference is that um, it's very art focused when it comes to uh, NFTs on Tezos. What do you think, Bjorn? I also think there's a difference in the community then, uh, but um, 
the community in Tezos is very art focused. Uh, some have this uh, these uh, Twitter spaces where they 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 do film screenings, but uh, they announce uh, a documentary that uh, that the community can watch together. Uh, can watch by themselves, and they they talk about it in the Twitter spaces. So I think very interested in community and in, in, into learning about uh, contemporary art uh, and and art in general. So, I, I don't see things like these happening in other blockchains. Uh, it's interesting. So really more artistic focus compared to other blockchains. It's really yeah. interesting, I think, how um, the different blockchains sort of have their own cultures. Yeah. Um, so, and I guess their own audiences also. So it must be very hard to define. <laughs> <laughs> I think the Tezos community, but um, uh, they they're learning to detach the the concept of the NFTs don't sa sa value sa financial value or or sa sa value ng crypto, uh, and and parang they dive deeper into the art art aspect of of the NFTs rather than uh, the game of the market. Yeah. Yeah, like in other blockchains, people would focus too much on the floor price of the collections. Yeah, it seems like with the Tezos, it's really about the art, regardless of the price of the or value of it. Fascinating. Then, the last question I think from our community from Daryl Kabagay What is the TPS or transactions per second and finality of Tezos now? So, I think this question's for you, I Ivan. I'm not very sure how to answer this this question actually. Transaction per second of Tezos. Parang nakita ko sa Lima upgrade yun. <laughs> it's a hundred transaction per second. So yeah. Oh, okay. Hundred seventy transaction per second. Then another question by Maharlika Mirasol. Twitter talaga ba? Wala bang FB community or group na NFT artists, creators, entrepreneurs? Mayroon tayo, Tezos, Philipp uh, NFT Philippines. Uh, um, not not Tezos-centric, uh, but uh, marami tayong communities sa uh, social media. Uh, yung Crypto Art PH, uh, uh, NFT Philippines, uh, so maraming maraming communities na po pwedeng ikutan uh, but kasi ako mostly uh, when I started nasa Twitter eh. so uh, nung time na yun parang sobrang konti pa lang ng, ng mga involved sa NFTs na, na nasa Facebook or or maybe I'm, I'm just not aware uh, pero yung yung Naging audience ko for what I'm doing uh, is mostly on Twitter. Yeah, I know. It's good for me, uh, but I can't speak for everyone else. I think for major, like for announcements and stuff, it's usually on Twitter. But like for discussions, uh, I I often see communities discussing on 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 Telegram as well. So yeah, like like what um Bjorn mentioned. We have Tesla's Philippines on, on Telegram. We also have Tesla's Philippines on Facebook for, for longer discussions. Yeah, but yeah, uh, I think in in uh, in Web3 space, you, ju you, ha you just have to be on Twitter, Telegram, Discord, Facebook to, to know about everything. Yeah. From what I've seen, it feels, uh, I just want to chime in. Um, from what I've observed, it feels like the uh, Facebook, is mostly where we see the educational aspect happening, mm -hmm. but the um, marketing of work, I feel like a lot of it, it, for some reason or another, happens on Twitter. At least that's uh, where, and that's where you lead people to discover your work. Mm -hmm. That's the way it seems to me, at least. I don't know if, you're, uh, if your experience is different. 
Yeah, I think for Philippines, uh, Twitter, Twitter is a uh, is a main for for NFT announcements. Yeah. Hmm. Good. So before I, we're reaching the top of the hour, so before we wrap up, Ivan, just want to ask: Is there anything Tezos community can to, Tezos community can look forward to in the near future? Near future, wow. Um, lots of stuff actually. Um, um, my our team at Tezos Philippines is uh, planning a lot of things for for our Filipino community. Um, now that um we, you know. The first step actually speed access is a very wonderful first step for us you know um it's very helpful for the community and it opens a lot of things for for our community as well uh but for this year we have planned a lot of stuff um there's an upcoming upcoming uh art fair that we that we we will be inside um to to do some educational workshop um so if you if you want to learn more about nfts um stay tuned for that uh, as I've mentioned, we also want to tap into games. Uh, we we will be launching some games um, this year, and we will be working with some entities in the Philippines. Um, so, for those who are into to gaming, um, stay tuned as well. And uh, also for those who are develop for developers, um, we would like to conduct um, developer workshops in the Philippines and to also um, give certifications to 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 those who are interested, and perhaps. Um, we can do some hackathons um in the philippines this year so yeah a lot of it's a it's a very busy year actually for for us and um i'm also very excited and also at the same time um quite quite uh yeah, excited and scared of, of the of the of the responsibilities that we're gonna do but yeah it'll be, it'll be a fun year so hopefully to have all of your support for this year Ivan, if somebody wants to um, participate or just wants to keep updated with the news coming out of Tezos, specifically for the Philippines, where should they go? Sure. Um, I think you can join us on, on Telegram or Twitter. Um, for, for, for Telegram, is uh, Tezos EHL. And then for Twitter, you just search Tezos Philippines. Uh, we also have um, Tezos Philippines on Facebook. So you join our handles. And then um, um, our community manager also... Uh, I'm also over there, then just ask a question and we'll, we'll do our best to, to help you and answer your question. So Tezos Philippines on Telegram, Facebook, and Twitter, correct? Yep, yep. Cool. We'll share those links to our community uh, before this uh, stream ends. Sure. All right. Really exciting year for Tezos and very timely that we're allowing Filipinos to have more seamless access to the XTZ token. Ivan Bjorn, thank you so much. But before you guys go, just any shout outs? Oh, you want Bjorn, to go first? Yeah. <laughs> shout outs uh, ano, uh, sa Crypto Art PH community, uh, uh, Kila Isma, and sa, sa only, uh, um, sa lahat ng mga na meet ko within the, within the NFT space, parang, uh, I would like to say hi. At saka sa, so TZ Apak, thank you for for the warm welcome. Uh, thank you for the opportunity and then, and, parang shout out sa inyo. <laughs> and thank you guys, thank you guys for having me. Of course, we are. How about you, Ivan? Um, of Tasos Philippines, of course. Um, of the two people that um helped to help me with the community. Um. Swift and also uh, Michael from, from between us and also crypto art PH. Um, uh, also thanks to VDEX uh, so for the wonderful opportunity and um, shout out to the NFT community in the Philippines, crypto art PH that I met uh, when I was there last year. Uh, yeah. Thanks a lot. All right, guys, thank you for um, making the time to join us tonight. Uh, we'll be sure to link social prof the social profiles you mentioned, Ivan, as well as yours, oh. Bjorn. All right. Thank you so much, guys. We learned a lot and see you guys around. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. For our audience, stick around. <laughs> we have a couple of giveaways to handle. Yes. I, I think what what's your take on your first episode, Pao? Ah, I always love talking to artists about their journey. 
and I learned a lot more about Tezos myself. I actually um, have not participated in Tezos personally. I've, most of my experience in crypto and NFTs has been on um, Solana so far. So I'm looking forward to exploring. I've seen a lot of work from Bjorn, and um, I want. I'm really looking forward to um, checking out what else they're coming out with this year. Yeah, same here. I think it is quite eye-opening for me because I didn't know much about um, what's being built in Tezos. I just knew it's um, one of those proof of stake smart contract platforms. But it's very nice of them to have their own community, which is the artist community. So it's great that they were able to foster and nurture this community. And I liked how they continue to support the artists. And I think this is their edge of being the blockchain that survives them all. <laughs> That's such an effort. interesting uh, goal, right? isn't it? <laughs> it is. And focusing on helping the artist community can help them achieve this goal. Because I don't think there's any blockchain that's doing this. And like what you said earlier, it, I think it's cool that it's more artist-centric, this particular ecosystem is, compared to like the Solanas and Ethereum, where everyone's flipping NFTs in order to speculate and all. But here, it's really more the traditional art side. So it's really a breath of fresh air. Well, I'm the year is long and there's a lot of platforms to talk about. I really want to see, I wonder if we'll get more interviews from the other um, foundations to see what they're um, looking into. Yeah, and, very exciting. Very exciting to have Tezos on PDAX now though. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And here are the social channels of Tezos. Hold on. Here's, um, we commented it in the comment sections. If you guys want to check it out, these are their socials. So just check out these links for Tezos Philippines in order to stay up to date on what's happening with Tezos. All right, so we're moving on to the next part of our program, which is we will be announcing the winners of our sharing contest. So two lucky winners uh, will be winning the Bjorn shirts. I wish and I could win. Me also. <laughs> It's my name there, Angelo. It's our name there. <laughs> We're just waiting for him to share his screen. All right. So, bum, 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 bum. First lucky winner is... Ooh, Kit Jorvina. Congratulations, Kit. Um, you just want a Bjorn shirt, so just PM, take a screenshot of this stream and PM our Facebook page. Now our team will get in touch. Congratulations, Kit. Yeah. Kit. Seem to win every week, huh? Uh. <laughs> right, we're winner for the sharing contest. All right. Congratulations, Zeton Granger. You just won a Bjorn shirt, so screenshot lang and PM our Facebook page. Now our team will get in touch for the next steps. Congratulations. All right. So next part is we'll be um doing a quiz game so you guys have more chance to win prizes. So hold on. Let me share my screen. All right. All right. So to those who aren't familiar with the quiz game, just a recap of the mechanics. Questions will be flashed on the screen and viewers will just need to type one, two, three, or four in the comment section for your answer. Note just the numbers and not the entire answer itself. So correct answers will have a chance to win two Bjorn NFTs and one Bjorn shirt. And first person to answer, first person to answer the question gets a prize. So to claim your prize, similar mechanics as our sharing contest a while ago, you just have to take a screenshot as your name is flashed and PM our Facebook page with your name, prize one, and the, your Tezos wallet address. Please so, note, right, if you won the raffle, you are not eligible to win the quiz game. <laughs> yes, give chance to others. <laughs> All right. For our first question of the quiz game is, so which crypto category cryptocurrency category is Tezos. It's a smart contract or blockchain platform like ETH, Solana, Avalanche, etc. Is it GameFi? Is it an NFT marketplace? Or is it DeFi? Right, answers are coming in. 
So someone already got it correctly. And the first person to answer this is Marlon Saluntao. So yes, cryptocurrency. So Tezos is a smart contract or a layer one platform, just like ETH. So congratulations, Marlon. You just won a Bjorn shirt. So just take a screenshot and PM our Facebook page. Congratulations. All right. Marlon so, Salantau. Second question is, which community did Tezos attract? Is artists, gamers, traders, or analysts? Questions right now are fairly easy eh, compared to previous episodes, guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So someone got it, the answer correctly. So the answer for this question is number one. So Tezos was able to attract a lot of artists in its ecosystem. And Ralph Pakada got this correctly and was the first one to answer. So congratulations, Ralph. You just won a Congratulations, Ralph. So take a screenshot lang and PM our Facebook page and our team will get in touch for the next steps. And down to our last question is, which of the following was created by Bjorn? Is it the one in the upper left, number one, the upper right, number two, bottom left, number three, or is it in the bottom right corner, number four? All right, so first per- correct answer for this one is number one. The, and the first person to answer correctly, Steven Carriasa. So congratulations, Steven. You just won a Bjorn NFT. So take a screenshot of this page and uh, of the stream and PM our Facebook page. So congratulations to all our winners for today. Congrats, everybody. Uh, I, does that conclude our giveaway program? <laughs> yep, that's the concluded. Great, great. Just remember, everybody, to um, please PM the page, all of the winners. Congratulations to you. Yeah, it was great co-hosting with this with you, Pao. I think you did really well. You seemed like a natural at this. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jed. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, likewise. Um, Looking forward to uh, getting to know this community, this particular community, a little bit more through the year. Yeah, so guys, stay tuned with our upcoming episode because more exciting guests to come, and maybe some more fresh new faces for co-hosting or host. So make sure you stay tuned every Monday, 5 p.m. All right. Thank you, everyone, right. and see you all next week. Thanks, everyone. See you next week. Bye. Bye.